Hey folks, welcome and thanks for joining me as we continue our journey in building this T3485 from Border Models in 135th scale. If you haven't seen my earlier videos of this build, I'll leave links in the description so you can check it out. As I mentioned in previous videos, I got into 3D printing and decided that I wanted to try to 3D print some faces to avoid the mess of foam. So let's see how we do with a muddy spring thaw scene on this newly printed vase. So the first step, we're going to start with this Smart Mud. Uh, I've really grown to like this stuff. It's a little finicky at first, so you get used to it, just because uh, it's really soft and malleable, and, and it, it goes down okay, but uh, you really need a rough edge or a, um, a rough surface to stick it to. And even this 3D print with the layer lines here gave, gave it some trouble in sticking. So uh, I tried it with a, uh, a uh, popsicle stick or like a large wooden stick here to start, and it definitely was okay, but you can see here, uh, I had a few instances where it just kind of like stuck to the stick more than it stuck to the base. And the real trick with this stuff is keeping whatever it is that you're using to sculpt it with dry. Any amount of moisture from water, um, I've even tried petroleum jelly and whatnot, just did not prevent it from sticking. So um, after I got the, uh, the uh, mud down, then I went back with the popsicle stick and just cleaned up the edges so we had some nice edges. So uh, rather than putting wood down, um, I decided to just clean up those edges and see how crisp and clean those edges are, even without having to put wood down and cut it and everything. So just wanted to avoid that as well. While the mud was still a little um, wet yet um, or soft, I went down with the tank and pushed down on the tracks to make some track marks. And then I took some spare panther tracks that I actually had in my kit and just pushed down on that. So this is all part of the story that we're going to be telling with this scene. So these track uh, tracks are... Um, part of the story right these panther tracks so it's important here to note uh, so the other part of the story here is this little barrel so this is just from a Tamiya uh, German fuel drum set so I just took the one half of it just so I could actually push down with my finger there and make it look like it kind of slid down the hill so after I got those slide marks down, I put some stones down and I put uh, different levels of ballast starting with some coarse ballast and some medium ballast I came in with some fine ballast after I painted that, but I didn't record that. But again, I put it down later. So just coarse and medium to start. And then, of course, some diluted PVA so it actually stays in place. And then I did put the barrel together and set it here. And this barrel is really nice. It actually has some dents and stuff in it. So we'll take advantage of that later. I did want to protect the black edges of this um, because it is 3D printed in black. So I just put some uh, tape around the edges to uh, protect it, just some masking. So. First thing we're going to do is going to put some acrylic mud down. So you can sculpt using uh, the smart mud, but I decided to use this silicone brush and some acrylic mud, the same stuff we used on the bottom of the tank in the earlier videos. And because it's going to give us the same consistency, it, it'll you know bring the two together and so to speak in the scene. And this stuff's much easier to sculpt. Okay, um, you know, smart mud is is nice for mostly for making the imprints, as you see. Like you can see here, all the cleats and teeth from the panther tracks. So what I'm doing here is just sculpting up the edges to make it look like the tank, in this case the panther that drove through here earlier, pushed up the edges of the mud. So again, it's much easier to sculpt the edges of the mud like this that build up mud with the acrylic mud just because it's so much easier to work with. It sticks well to the base. I mean, you're not fighting the mud. Again, smart mud's good for the imprints. Use acrylic for building up the mud. So I also wanted to build up the mud from this drum. So in, in my little story, as the panthers are running away or retreating from the T-34, uh, they lost a fuel drum or dumped it or whatever the case is, and it slid down this little bit of an incline and landed against that rock. So I also brought the tank in itself just to make sure I got the positioning down and I build up some mud around the edge of it. And again, this just really helps with locating it later because we're still going to have to build this back up later. But you can see how it incorporates the tank right into the uh, base itself just really brings it together now of course we can't leave that there because we do have to paint so we're going to remove it for now very carefully as you can see now we definitely have a spot for the tank so after that was done essentially putting the mud down i came in with all the the foliage in this case it's just going to be 
clusters of grass and there's one there I found with some little flowers on so in early spring you usually get a few flowers that come in even after the snow might fall again early spring you get those weird snowfalls so um, I brought in a few with some flowers on and I also want to add some leaves because I'm just thinking like my wife and I were on a walk and you know after you see the snow melt you usually see the leaves from the previous fall underneath the snow so I just want to add some few leaves in and uh, really bring the scene together for later and you'll see how that plays in so at this point now we're primering it in black so again this is just my Vallejo thin down black primer and the point of this is just to unify everything we don't want uh, all these different colors to paint over so we're gonna paint everything black now during this process, anything that wasn't glued down with PVA glue uh, did blow off. So there were a few leaves that were lost, but again, it's no big deal. And at this point, again, like I always say during our tank builds, you just take a moment to appreciate all the textures you see while it's uh, painted this beautiful black primer color. And this is all the texture that we're gonna be able to color here in just a moment. Before we move on, just a quick reminder to like, leave a comment, and subscribe if you wanna see more content. I also have daily updates on my Patreon if you want to check that out as well. Now we're going to paint the plant. So I like to start with this Dunkelgill base just because it's kind of like that dried grassy look. And again, if you see any field in the fall or in the spring, which really is when you're going to see uh, the foliage uh, incorporated with some snow, you're going to see that there's grounds, yellows, and maybe some greens. Uh, and that's exactly what we're trying to simulate here. So we'll start with the yellow bases and that kind of gives you the dried parts. And we're just giving that a good, a nice good coverage over all the plants from all the angles. And then we'll go over with a light base. And what you notice is that when you're spraying with the airbrush, uh, the paint does not go into the middle of the plants. They stay black. Um, so you could primer with a brown if you wanted that to be more brown. But the point is it actually makes it look like there's a lot more volume to the plants than what there really is just because it's dark. It kind of gives you these fake shadows that adds volume to the plants, uh, which is a really nice effect. So the last step, I'm going to come in with this bright green, and this just adds some green color so it's not just like a washed out yellowish plant. We just want to add a little bit of vibrancy to them because um, especially during a thaw, there's plenty of water in the ground and the sun would be out so you would think these plants are going to start turning green and then I did come back with some yellow and went over the flowered plants to kind of give it a yellow look which is usually the, usually the color of the plants that come in early spring so next I gave these enamel another shot so I tried this on the tank and I didn't really care for the results when I airbrushed it but I figured I want to try it on the base and I will say this has become my new favorite way of painting a base in earth tones. Rather than painting it in a couple different shades of Tamiya like I did on the Whippet, I really liked how this one earth tone enamel from an airbrush worked because we got highlights, we got darkened areas. I mean, it just really brought this all out. Like, look at the details, and all it is is an enamel earth so at this point I had to wait for that enamel to dry so I went back and I did the drum so I primered the drum painted it with field gray because that's you know like a nice greenish gray color barrel and then uh, from there I'm going to be chipping this thing just like we do any other way so you guys see how I do this on my tanks German camo black brown and slow mo retarder from VMS and a sponge and uh, this just works so well. And you can see, look at them beautiful details. Um, I did come back and, and do the dents as well with a brush afterwards. But uh, the next step here is to do the dark wash. Um, so this is just gonna bring out those lines on this drum, which again is actually pretty darn nice from Tamiya. Now granted, I don't really like these all that well because of the seams. You have to use CA to fill and then sand, uh, but it still turned out really nice. And just to add a little bit extra touch, we added some fuel stains to the drum as if it you know, was leaking a little bit when it fell off the tank. So we put it in place, push, push it down into place and glue it, uh, and then let it sit for now as we go back to paint these rocks. So um, these rocks are going to get covered up later, so it's not a humongous deal, but I just want to add a little bit of the, that sand grout color for rocks. I like to use this color for rocks just because it's a nice grayish brown color. Um, it's a nice natural rock color. Uh, very similar to actually the color of the rocks before I put, um, painted them black. So I came back with damp earth. Now this doesn't have any texture in it. This is just an enamel. And I came back with this because uh, this damp earth adds a little bit of a gloss effect. 
So I wanted to put this enamel over all of the mud textures that we had made earlier, again, before we uh, primered it. And this, again, it's adding that gloss texture in. So this is gonna make it look like these uh, tracks are fairly fresh and they are wet. Again, it's the gloss is really what we're after because this is pretty much the same shade as earth. It's just with some gloss into it and that's what makes it damp earth. Um, again, you can just see I'm just kind of going all over the place over top of those textures that we put down before we primered it. And again, it's just showing the wet build up mud around the edges of all these tracks. So then I come in with this damp earth. Now this has some texture to it. Uh, has some extra pigment in it, so it's a, little, it's a lot thicker. Um, you guys have seen me use this as splashes. I decided to use it to fill in the edges around that drum. And then I also will come back and I'll show you I did that same thing with the tank. But I did want to paint these leaves first. So you can see I'm just using rust colors, orange, red. You can use a dark brown, although there's a lot of dark brown already down, so I didn't want to put that in there as well. I wanted to add some color. Again, with this being a thaw scene, you're not going to see all these leaves, but we're going to see how this comes together when we add the uh, snow later. So, again, painted all those rust colors on the leaves, and now we're coming in with fresh mud. So, my thought with fresh mud was that this would be like the damp earth, but darker with a bit of a gloss effect. You can see me putting this down inside where the panther tracks are, and I'm sticking with the enamels because they just kind of soak in, so you don't lose any of those details, as you guys can see there, with the, where the cleats are and whatnot on the tracks that are impressed into the smart mud. I don't want to fill any of that in. We just want to make sure that it's stained a nice, dark, earthy color. Now, I did have to come back with some wet effects to give it that wet look. I didn't capture that step. But I noticed when it dried, it actually dried uh, matte. So you did have to come back and paint that with some wet effects. So at this point now, I switched over to paint a few rocks. And you guys have seen me do this on the Whippet. So just a, a couple gray and yellow colors to put on the rocks. Then I set the tank back in place. And this is so we can actually fill those tracks back in. So you can see it didn't set down in the texture like we originally set up. So I'm taking damp earth with a little bit of the texture in the splashes range uh, from ammo and I'm filling in that gap. So it looks like the tank is in the mud, but not so deep that it's like, you know, stuck in the mud, right? It's just that it's pushed up that mud, it's fresh. This tank is just coming through here and we're seeing it while it's still wet. And again, here you can actually see how that uh, the panther tracks didn't look wet. I had to come back with wet effects to fix that. So at this point, now we're ready for, for the uh, snow. So we're going to add in this powder snow and binder. And this is pretty much how the process works. You either have powder snow or uh, wet snow. Uh, you'll see me do both of them here. But you add in some binder, you add in some gloss, and then you mix it together into this paste. And the, the um, powder snow is more like a fresh fallen snow. We're going to put that on these rocks here. Something that's not mixed with mud. This is really good for just because it's fresh snow sitting on top of the rocks. And you can see it kind of is self-leveling as well. And, it, and then uh, to get the snow in between the plants, we have to put some of that snow powder in between the plants just uh, without any binder in them. So this is just me putting the snow powder uh, from a pipette onto the area that we're trying to cover and you can see how it really quickly fills in and gives you that look of like a powder snow uh, maybe it's something that's just fresh fallen um, and then we're going to come in with some diluted pva glue and we're going to set it in place and that's also going to break the surface tension and make it kind of level out and flatten out all over your area here that i'm showing um, and it just makes it almost look like a wet snow because it's a very thin dusted snow uh, But we do want to make some actual wet snow looks so same thing wet snow then binder and some gloss And you turn it into this paste and what's neat about this I don't know what's different with the with the powder because that's the only thing that's different It's the same binder and same gloss, but you get this almost translucent looking Paste um, as you can see here and what's nice about that is it makes it look as if it's melting it looks really good and again we're going to put this over all of the areas that we had covered earlier with the damp earth um, but more so in the in the middle of it right so just like we do the the uh, coverage on the tank we kind of start with bigger areas and work our way down to smaller areas well, we're doing doing the same thing here uh, and then what i'm doing is taking some water just just tap water 
and I'm blending the edges just to kind of melt it down, soften it together. And yeah, you can see I had some bleed through from some of the paint when I put PVA glue down earlier, but I covered all that up with the wet snow. So again, here I'm going through with some, I, I diluted some of that wet snow mixture and I'm putting more of it down. And here you can get a really good example. I'm gonna speed this up for you guys here, just so you can see how this whole section here is coming together. As we started with some thicker wet snow, then I kept diluting it with water. I made a diluted batch of wet snow. And then we can really see how it blends in along that damp earth that we put down earlier and makes it look like the snow is melting into the ground, into the mud. And it's just, it just looks more natural for you know a, a wet snowfall after tanks have come through. And just look at all them beautiful details. Next, we have to blend the snow into the dirt, right, the mud. So we're just going to take, again, the same earth we painted it with to begin with, while it's still kind of wet, and we're essentially wet blending. Now, your wet blending enamels in acrylic, so they don't necessarily want to mix, but it actually looks more natural that way because, again, if you've ever seen it, that's really how it does look is you get this muddy, murky, you know, mix with the translucent. So at this point, we're ready to take that masking off make our 3D printed faceplate and attach it to our scene. And that's the last step we gotta do before we call this whole thing finished. I hope you all enjoyed this video and this wonderful build journey that we went on together building this T3485. I hope that you'll join me for the next build. So don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out as we build a Tiger One by Rye Field Models with full interior. Mm -hmm.